Oh, hey, everybody. Welcome to Vaginal Fantasy. This is a romance book club that has been going on for upwards of four, over four years now, you guys, which is really exciting. And I'm so pleased to say that me and my three hosts have perused the world of romance slash genre fiction from laser blaster to Highland penis blaster. I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's a new one. Know. That's a new one, right? I made that yeah. one up. Not that, that, I feel like that's an additive at Jamba Juice. Not even drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're really excited. This this is our, um, what is it, 53rd Hangout. And oh we have a really God. fun book that had some controversy, so that'll be a good discussion. But first, let me in introduce all our hosts. So we have, uh, with the cutest new haircut, Veronica Belmont. <laughs> oh, thank you. Aw. Thank you. Oh, Didn't really? I, I had short so hair cute. last time. I did. I don't, it looks even cuter this time. The bangs are a lot longer now. They've had a full full vaginal fantasy cycle to grow out since the last time you saw me. So. But you have a perfect bang yeah. face. You know, you Yanks. just have the bang face. Yeah, you can just your face is bangable. Is. <laughs> yeah. And we have Bonnie Burton with another set of bangable bangs. Yeah, this I I actually I'm trying to grow out my hair a little bit more so it's Brit pop and less so less Betty Page. More like '90s Brit pop band. I like it. It's like really yeah. they're 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 skimming your eyes, which I can never do. I can't deal with which, the which makes there. that really awesome. If you have like a zit on your forehead, or if your eyebrows are uneven, like mine usually are. So this is perfect. Okay, and then our last, uh, but not never the least host, uh, Kyla Casey. Hello. I uh, I don't have any bangs, but um, you got I, the good hair. Uh, it's Kyla with uh, the good okay. hair. Oh God damn you! Um, thank you. But uh, but uh, Jesse, you know, fiance, has been uh, wanting me to get bangs. He's looked through my Instagram and he was like, "Oh, bangs, hot!" And I'm just like, "Yeah, like literally hot on my face." And I just can't, I can't right now. So, but maybe in the fall. So don't take hair requests. I yeah. mean, you can take it in consideration, but don't no. I mean, I, I could definitely have combed my hair, all right? I'll admit that, guys. I'm sorry. I phoned it in from the, this, uh, my scalp up is phoning it in. Whatever, you guys. Anyway. <laughs> this is why I do, this is why I do the I, braids. This is what braids are for. You When your hair, because, like, my hair was, like, crazy yeah. off road out, and I'm like, nope, doing the braids. This is, like, yeah, called Lazy good. Swiss Miss. Lazy Swiss Miss. I mean, it's cute. And then, oh, Ky Kyla has hers. For, I've never, I've never been. Whenever I wear bang, I think I did it in one guild video, and I wore pigtails, and I looked like ten and a half, but not an attractive <laughs> ten and a half. Like the kind of girl that you wouldn't want to hang out with ten and a half, ten and a half. Like, well, wait a minute. Was it like a Pippi Longstocking thing? Because I would totally hang out with Pippi Longstocking. No, it was like homely. Like you don't have enough hair for those braids, girl. Oh, it's that's fine. Um, I like um, your I like your hair the way it is right now. I was telling you that before. I think you look like a ballerina. You. Wait, what? Veronica keeps dropping out, you guys. We have two Veronicas here in the hangout. I don't know what's happening. Veronica, you got cloned. Ugh, all the other me will go away. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Ugh, my internet like died or something. I don't know uh -oh. what's going on. Guys, oh, okay. Bear with Orphan me. Veronica. Fine. I would like to give a shout out to something I paid for and they did not pay me to say this, okay? I always have connectivity issues in my house. I upgraded to Time Warner, and still, I think, I don't know, the router's borked or whatever, still have things. I bought this thing called Eero, E-E-R-O. Um, we have one, so I guess I can't really, what is you know, it? Oh. problem with them that much right now. I don't know what's going on. It's like, they're like wireless, wireless extenders, so basically you plug one in your router, and then basically they can overlap their area of reach, and if oh. you do that, they relay to each other, and basically... I have Wi-Fi through my my whole my house is really long, so I never got Wi-Fi properly in the back of the house, and now I get it all the way the length of the house because they basically relay on on each other. So I'm, I mean, I'm sorry, Veronica. I guess it didn't. There's something else I don't going know on. What it is? It's okay. Well, if I drop off, I'll come back on again. Which we'll miss you. A, a little bloop. I mean, yeah. I, I did try because I do read our user comments and when they're constructive, and one of them was that there was people are complaining about a lag. So I hmm. tried to hook up my Ethernet to my MacBook Air, but MacBook Air doesn't have that. That it doesn't have the connector that an Ethernet. You need a dongle. You need a dongle. Yeah, you need. It yeah. This. There's a there's a thing. No, that no, dongle I know. You get. So I got it, but it doesn't work. Oh what? So well, go, 
take your MacBook and you take that dongle and you take it back to the Mac store. You tell them to store. shove that dongle. Well, yeah, you tell them to shove it right Mac up. My store is the same thing as my everything store, which is drunken Amazon Prime. So I'm just going to have to... I'll make, a cra I'll make an earring or something. But I'm just saying, we listen to your comments, viewers. So don't complain on this video that there's a lag because we tried. And we're, we, we're, we're we're going through the motions for you guys. Honestly, <laughs> I have I have the dope ass internet, man. I'm getting 214 down and 150 up right now with four millisecond ping time. So I'm feeling pretty good. It yeah. was just must have been. Let's just blame Google Hangouts because why not? Um, it, it it's really crap technology. I don't think they have like four pe the four people who work on Google Plus still <laughs> actually are the are the a whole Google Hangout team, which is really sad because I really like this technology, but mm -hmm. it is vastly under I think updated. Okay. Um, before we get into the book this month, oh, someone's calling me. I don't know who it is. Don't not gonna answer it. It's not um, I I want to give a local. We have a local shout. We have a lot of local meetups around the world who meet once a month either to discuss our book of the month or whatever books and we have our Dallas chapter got an article in the newspaper yeah Dallas Observer and it was funny because it was a reporter that went to a local Having sound issue that went to a local meetup in Dallas and they uh, all hated the book we're gonna review tonight <laughs> yes but it, but but it was it was a good profile and I was so yeah. proud of them and they are a loyal group who is one of the OG groups and I'm so excited they got their their moment of glory in the sun so if you guys are interested in meeting up with other people and reading books of this ilk whether it's the one we pick or one that you guys want to read do it it's there's a local group go to goodreads.com/vaginalfantasy and there's a local group section so anyway here's a shout out to all the people who met in July and are up, up meeting in the upcoming August um, on July 6th we had the vaginistas uh, meet in a Google Hangout on July 6th we also had the literary ladies of the night meet in the Google Plus Hangout uh, beers boobs and books in East Lansing Michigan met at a private residence which is exciting mm. uh, Viking booty in real life meetup happened in Sweden which is very cool because they're usually a Google Hangout the Central European Tarts met on a Google Plus Hangout, which is cool. Um, the Venus Flytraps met in Centerville, Ohio. The Books, Booze, and Board Games met in London, which is awesome because you can discuss books and play board games, or I would assume that from the title. The Viking Booty Hangout met uh, again in a, in a Google Plus Hangout. The Ladies of the Great Lakes met in Detroit. What is that sound? <laughs> Sounds like a truck driving through some common What the world was that? Um, well, you know what? You know it's the train every time. It's me. Oh, oh it's the train. Oh, it's, you. The train. Okay. it's the train. Oh, yeah. I was like, who's shaking? I live by the train tracks because I'm a I'm a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot you're a hobo. Stop embarrassing That's me. That's, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We'll move on. No hobo um, shame. <laughs> coming up on August seventh, we have another Viking booty hangout. We have a vaginistas hangout on the on the seventh as well. On the eighth, we have the yearning yinzers in Homestead, Pennsylvania at the Barnes & Noble at the Waterfront, so check that out. Mm -hmm. And then we also have on the 25th, the Vagical Girls Book Club for in Winter Haven, Florida, to be determined where they're meeting up. So anyway, if you guys are interested in just meeting some really cool people, um, check it out. And if not, just watch us talk about our books, which this month is Kyla's pick. Kyla, you want to talk a little bit about, well, wait, let me read the description, and then you can talk about why you picked this book. Okay. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bonnie, where's the cover? There it is. Oh my God, it's that sweet. It's like Daryl Sweet. It's like the old school. It's like a D and D campaign. D and D campaign, exactly. Okay, Rhapsody, Child of Blood by Elizabeth Hayden. The brilliant new saga is born. Rhapsody is a woman, a singer of some talent, who is swept up into events of world-shattering import. On the run from an old romantic interest who won't take no for an answer, Rhapsody literally bumps into a couple of shady characters, half-breeds, who come to rescue her in the nick of time. Only the rescue turns into an abduction, and Rhapsody soon finds herself dragged along in an epic voyage, one that spans centuries and ranges across a world-filled fantasy world. A wonderful fantasy world. Okay. A world so real you can hear the sweet music of Rhapsody's obeyed? Yeah, whatever. And smell the smoldering forges deep within the cauldron. <sighs> yeah. By okay. the way, this is really heavy. It's really. I know. I'm sorry. You got some wrist strength. Okay, <laughs> Kyla, you're muted. But what? Why did you pick this book? Okay, sorry. Unmuted. I was sorry, just, I was having some microphone weird issues. Or I thought you maybe it was me, right? So now. It's, 
Yeah, it sounds better now. I think that the snowball, it doesn't matter. Who cares? Um, okay, I picked this book because my friend Melissa, who has just been incredible to me the entire time I was pregnant, the way most of you have, but just extra special. Um, she and I have very similar tastes in books, and she she recommended this one, and I looked it up, and I was like, oh, that sounds like something I totally would have read when I was like in my 20s. And then uh, and then it turns out I actually did read that book in my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> nice. so, because I loved really, really, lo I still do love really, really long involved, you know, high fantasy books. So I, um, I I just feel really bad about that, that I inflicted such a long book on all of you. Well, we, um, gave, we, so that, we gave him an extra week, and next month it's a shorter book, so there you go. Okay, good. Well, anyway, that's why I chose the book, and um, and and so then once I got into it, it was like interesting to see, you know, like how how I felt about it now versus how I felt about it then. The same way I did uh, with Outlander. So, anyways, that was it. Uh, yeah, and what what it let's why don't why don't we just kick it off? What did you think about reading the book? So this is the second time you've read the book. Yes, but I mean it. I mean that was long. I'm not gonna say it. I'm 60 years old. Obviously, everyone knows that. <laughs> that I'm 60, 61 years old. Um, but uh, <laughs> I thought I still I still really liked it. Um, but it definitely um, the writing wasn't as. Uh, Sophisticated as I thought it was when I was younger, and um, and it wasn't as complex as I thought it was when I was younger. But I still really enjoyed reading it, so I'm still gonna give it a thumbs up. Okay, uh, Bonnie, general yeah. impressions of this book? Well, first of all, because we didn't say what we're drinking. Oh, I forgot. I'm sorry, bad hostess. So maybe we should do a quick roll call. Yes. Uh, uh, Kyla, what are you drinking? Just so we is it Tang and vodka straight or so? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's always my my Tang. It's this, yeah, it's vodka drink. But mostly, um, I've had a really really terrible week month. Um, so you're drinking straight thing? from the bottle? And, yeah, and it's not just it's not just straight from the bottle. It's like I'm drinking. I am a hobo. I am drinking like bottom shelf. Here we go. Look at this. Wow, Seagram no, Seven. Seagram. Damn, yeah, girl. yeah, and just. Just straight, just straight from that's the like, bottle. That's literally you're 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 li you live by the train care. tracks and you drink that. Like that's literally hobo mm -hmm. whiskey. <laughs> like I wow. can speak, to, I can speak to this from some experience. I worked at a liquor store for many years, and yes, you are drinking like a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I really should have put it in a, a paper bag and just and just like gone know, full like, hobo tonight. You drinking <laughs> like a hobo was like how I drank in junior high. So I don't even know what that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> speaking, speaking of junior high, <laughs> I, I think Jesse's about to get me a paper bag to complete the Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what are you drinking, Bonnie? <laughs> I, so I, in honor of the Wonder Woman trailer that debuted at Comic-Con that I love, mm -hmm. this is Wonder Woman, and inside it is a wine cooler. Nice, nice. <laughs> not like Saint, not like freaking like Boone's. Boone's Farm. Boone Farm. Well, oh, I am drinking Bertles and James. Is that similar? Yes. Uh, I don't think we had that where yeah, I came from. Soda poppy, and uh, I think the reason I am on a wine cooler kick is because I'm on a 1980s kick. So I've been doing a lot of like because of strange because of Stranger Things because of Stranger Strang Things because mm. of Stranger Things. I'm obsessed. I've watched it like three times now. I'm totally obsessed. But I, uh, I, I've been drinking. I've been going back to my old ways. Uh, so that would have been high high school. So Drew Barrymore school of drinking. So more like wine cooler. And okay. also, and also uh, schnapps. Oh Jesus! Sean, Sean, God, you two are hard. Really bad. Nice. It's really yeah. bad. Sean oh, Sandaluka from the from the from the chat says all you need is a, a banjo and a trash fire. By the way, Sean, just a shout out to Sean, who's an amazing moderator and actually keeps the forums clean for the first time in four years. He is doing a, a, a bachelor fantasy book of his own, and it features a little not in a romantic, sexy way, but we are all in it. Yeah. So if if you want to check that out, oh, we're getting a ver reverberation now, but um. If you want to check that out, check. Um, I think he posted it either on the forums or the Vaginal Fantasy has retweeted it. So yeah, Sean, talk in the chat and tell people where they can read it. Yeah, yeah, Sean, link it in the chat or whatever. I'm sure YouTube allows links from anybody. I'm sure. <laughs> okay. I'm anyway, drinking wine. You're drinking wine. I'm drinking With water nice because I had con flu all week from Comic Con. Yeah. But see, I I had the I did I had like 
con flu without going to Comic Con, so I got some weird virus. By the way, Veronica, if you go to the hospital, they won't let you play Pokemon Go in the emergency room. What? what? Why did you what? go to the emergency room, first of uh, all? I, I had severe dehydration. Mm. What? Yeah. Where? I, uh, because I got the flu and I didn't take care of myself and I just thought I'd get over it and it was like some weird Ebola version of the flu. It wasn't a 24-hour thing. It was a six-day thing and mm. I... I couldn't keep anything down, so I just got dehydrated. So they stuck me on an IV and then took away my phone. What? <laughs> Apparently, I had like a really super rare Pokemon in my room. Because <gasps> interns, what? yeah, interns kept looking in with their phones, like looking at. You know how when you have a yeah. hospital door, there's that little window, and so there, I, I would see a phone every once in a while. I'm like, who cares if I have an IV? And I'm like, oh wait a minute, and I got my. I'm like, there's a freaking, there's like an Egon or one of the snake things. Egon. Those are really common. Like, it, it, it was all growlers oh, and Egon. One? Okay. Yeah. Well, I thought it was rare. That's why it was all Magikarps. At, that's what I saw when, I didn't go to Comic Con, obviously, but that's what everybody kept showing me. Yeah. Just constant Magikarps. Everybody. All right, so. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, Bonnie, um, um, I'm glad that you're not dead, and right. sorry that you're putting on book. I did. It gave me. It gave me extra time to read. Good. And what did you think about the book? General impressions. Okay. General impression was um, a lot of interesting world building. I'll start with positives. Lots of interesting world building and interesting characters. Uh, even though the lead character was a bit of a little miss perfect. Um, only two sex scenes, which was kind of annoying, and one of the sex scenes uh, I personally didn't care about, but everyone else did, so now I feel pervy for not caring. Same. <laughs> so I don't care if 13-year-olds have sex, because we've been dealing with that since Romeo and Juliet, and then they died at the end anyway. So I was like, and, and not to mention Game of Thrones, and most fantasy has, like, young people having sex, so I didn't care. Yeah. What's the noise? Sorry, sorry. Every time a train goes by, I'm just gonna drink from. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really a train? It sounds like you have like a snuffleupagus in the living room. No, it's a it's a train. It's going train by. Department. No, walking Spanish I down. I like has like turned into boxcar Willie and like less. No, I'm like Tom Waits. That's so my Tom Waits impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. It just sometimes happens. I can't it's okay. control it. It's okay. It's, it's, it's almost as though they're on some kind of schedule. It is weird, but <laughs> not weird. It's also it's because it's summer, so the door, the windows are open and everything. So it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so Bonnie, those are your general thoughts. My you general thoughts you. are lots of world building. It took a long time to read, and I feel like maybe I have ethics issues because I didn't care if underage kids have sex. Okay, I, good summary. Okay, uh, Veronica. <laughs> Veronica. So I loved this book. I was like blown away. Like I, okay, so just, just off the bat, like I know there were some problematic things with it. I'll get to that. But my initial impression was I started reading and though there was some, you know, they did jump around a bit from, from the first chapter or two to the rest of the book. You know, there was definitely a big jump between what was going on between those two eras in time. Um, but I, I thought the world building was incredible. I thought it was so fleshed out and so interesting and, and pretty different, too. Like, I felt like it wasn't, even though there were elf-like people, they didn't really feel the same. And it just, I, I don't know, it felt really kind of fresh to me in a lot of ways. I loved Ahmed. I loved um, Grunthor. Um, I loved a lot of the characters. Rhapsody, yes, I, I definitely got the sense that she was a little bit of that mi Little Miss Perfect, and it kind of drove me crazy that she was like, I don't understand why everyone's so <laughs> nice to me and weirded out all the time. Oh, I'm not pretty. <laughs> and, like, literally, have you ever looked in like a pond of water or like <laughs> have mirrors where you come from? Like you don't even notice that you look different from how you used to look, which wasn't bad when it started. Like that was a little, that was a little suspicious suspension of disbelief there. Um, yeah, did not even think about the 13-year-olds having sex. Did not hey. even cross yeah. my mind until I saw it in the forums. <laughs> Me either. Like, oh, okay. I can see why that might be troubling to some people. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Uh, I, they, they were of equal age or thereabouts, so for me that was not so problematic, I guess. Um, 
teens these days, right, kids? Yeah. Um, on their on their holly or whatever their ball, ball and she was holly. literally at a dance where they were supposed to like pick her a husband so like I didn't feel too bad about that like she got the hell out of there um, so yeah it was uh, the only thing I didn't love too was that that old trope that you know she was you know the threat of rape or having been raped and then she has to like that drives the plot forward in some kind of way. What I did appreciate a little bit, I guess, is that the men in her life didn't really seem to find that to be a motivating factor. They were like, for better or for worse, they were like, oh, okay, well, we assume that happened to you. You know, let's let's move on, I guess. That was kind of weird, um, but also different, because usually someone's like, I'm going to white knight you. Blah, blah, blah. They were like, whatever. Um, yeah, her abilities were interesting. Uh, this was one of the first books where I went out and like actively recommended it to people afterwards. Like, wow, did you read this book? And then I saw the Goodreads reviews, and I was like, wow, people really didn't like this book. I know. So I feel like it's in either. And even Felicia gave it four stars, and then the Goodreads forum was like, I'm gonna walk this back a bit. I was like, whoa, what's going on? <laughs> Sorry. And so I, mean, I started. I actually started reading the next book, and I'm enjoying that as well. And it's kind of keeping me from doing other things at this point. Um. So I don't know. I guess maybe I just have wanted a book like this for a really long time again. Like that old, you know, prophesied ones, the chosen ones, the, yeah. the magical three or whatever. I just, maybe it was felt kind of like a homecoming and, and that was a nice change. And to have a woman in that lead role for a change and not be like the chosen boy, the golden boy was, was nice. She was just yeah. the girl made of fire, the fiery girl. The yeah. fire girl. Okay, yeah. I, I read this book probably forever ago, and I, when I read it, I was like, this is literally the best thing I've ever read. I was so in love with it, I read all the other book, it, books, so, and I read it at four stars in Goodreads, because it was just a really long time ago, and in rereading re it, I really enjoyed a lot of things about it. I really enjoyed the first half of the book. So the first half we follow, and and by, by the way, like I wasn't like I wasn't offended by the underage sex, um, the thirteen year olds getting on, but like I don't like to see a dog erection. I don't want to think about a teenager erection. Like I just it grosses me out. So I mean I wasn't like oh my god this is child porn. It was just like ew I don't want to think about two thirteen year olds doing it. Uh, it just was gross to me. So that's fine. But um, the second half of the book I I just I, it was very dense. And I was kind of reading under time pressure because I, I waited till the last minute to read it. So I did appreciate a lot of it. I kind of just felt like it was so much information. I was a little bit lost as to all the things that were happening that were basically being narrated to me. Like, there, here's the history of this, and this is what happened. It was, it was kind of hard to translate without seeing it happen, just being told all this history happened. But I will say that it's amazingly fleshed out. Um, and I love the attention to detail. I loved Achmed and Grunthor. They're my favorite. Like, them traveling together was so much fun. Um, I really hated, uh, we could talk about it in the characters, but that, her sister Jo, I just was like, what? Oh, no, Jo's doing? terrible. Like, Jo's the worst. <laughs> the scrappy, scrappy do of this book series. But, the ass. Oh, she's totally the scrappy do. Oh, yeah. Oh, scrappy do. Don't even. Oh. Yeah. So anyway, I had mixed Wait, feelings really about it. Also, Rhapsody got like you, like everyone says, like, "What? You think I'm beautiful? I can't tell you think I'm beautiful. <laughs> everyone has an erection. Why? I'm so ugly." Like she was a prostitute. Her job was to detect if guys had an erection around her. Like to suddenly walk through fire, get a hymen, and be so naive about everyone being turned on by her is just it was too much for me. So that started making me turn on Rhapsody. Whereas before, I loved it. I was like, "Yeah, she's got a." glowing sword and she could do fire and she could sing and she's amazing um, so I, I think that it was just a question of if it had been 200 pages shorter I think I would have been on board the whole thing it's just over time it sort of wore thin on me the whole Rhapsody act um, yeah. but I did enjoy the book and I actually think it's kind of like a Wheel of Time series it's definitely written during that era yeah. and it's not the most fleshed out mature like the kind of gritty fantasy we're used to now but it was sort of a uh, more immature kind of, but but very world building, and I think of that time, it's very very well written for the time. So anyway, that's my general thoughts. So we gotta clear this up because the chat chat room is confused. Yes, 
when she walked through the fire, all of her imperfections were taken away, and that included healing her broken hymen. So she was pure again, and they talk about that a lot in the book. So that was weird. So that's a that is revirginized. That's yeah. as a, as feminists, which mm-hmm. we all are. That is a that is a problem. A lot of people on the forums had a problem with it. They were just like, first of all, the hymen thing is a total myth. Why do right. people have hymens? Like a lot of people don't even have them. Like it's just really. A lot of people, no, they don't. You, yeah, or it just it never close. It's you're born with it, not closed up all the way, or you go or horseback breaks. riding, yeah. or like you sit on something weird. I don't know. Yeah, I, and I, also, I, it did it did kind of feel like that's such a guy thing to care about. Like I don't yeah. think women, because like nowadays that's not something like we're. I guess there is that restoration surgery you can get, but that's more like to feel. Something, I guess. I don't know. That's different, though. No, I think that, that tightens. That tightens it. Yeah. And that's then, like, they sort of stuff really. all like, I mean, no one wants paint. to break. I mean, no one wants to break <laughs> through the other side a second time. Like, I'm just saying, like, that's a like your first time for sex is never what it says in the movies and TV. It's like well, painful and like. Yeah. There's like stuff everywhere, and it's like there's there's it's yeah. just bad. So getting getting a new hymen is a bug, not a feature. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's that's like yeah. a user interface situation that I would mm-hmm. do not need to have fixed. Like, that's I'm, what they, that's what they call it, losing it because you want to lose it. It's you know it's not like oh I found my uh, my hymen. Yeah, like my broken I, hymen. If I walk through the fire, <laughs> if anything I want to get healed, it's not that. Like, there's so many, like, adult acne, I want to get rid of that. I want to get rid of, like, my metabolism being screwed up or my thyroid screwed up. Right. Like, hymen is, like, all the way down at the bottom of the list, and that's, like, below, like, just other stuff. Like, that's below, like, walnut allergy. Yeah, like, like, I have a a scar that I swear I got from, uh, from leaning against a pole on the, um... Dance floor? No, 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 the, in, in San Francisco, the Muni. So, like, leaning against a pole, and then it, it got, like, a, like, infected or something, and then I had to go have it removed, and then I got MRSA. Oh, I had MRSA wow. on my face. <gasps> I'm st- terrified that this is going to be MRSA. I'm terrified of that, because I didn't Stop picking it. That's how I got it. I'm not picking I haven't touched it, touched it the first time. <laughs> now everyone knows you have a pimple, Kyla. Way to go. <laughs> God damn it. I think I said the, it wrong. The chat is reminding us that Jessica on True Blood <laughs> yes. was a virgin when she became a vampire, so she always had her hymen regrow, which is uh, terrible. Isn't that the worst? Ugh. And yet she did just keep doing it, but I suppose if you're a vampire, you got like super... Super skill, like like pain doesn't affect you as much. Yeah, but what does that mean? If that means that that regrows, does that mean your wisdom teeth come come back in and your tonsils come back oh, in, your yeah. tendons comes back in? Does if you had a pimple, it would always grow back. <gasps> yeah. No, no, because that was probably an imperfection already. I think anything that made you sick before would be gone. Yeah, okay, but it's like point, if you point. had a nose job, does that mean your original nose comes yes. back as Maybe. a vampire? Yes. Did oh. they cover that on True Blood? That'd be a good storyline. They should be, probably just send that in. The boob jobs alone would be an episode. Yeah. yeah they just pop out. They get yeah, rejected. They're, they're gone, and you're like, what? Boop. That's not Or good. even worse, you like <laughs> revert back to like your overweight junior high self with glasses. Like, I think you're supposed to just like when you become a vampire, you just like you freeze at whatever you look like right then. That's horrible because I would never want that because no woman is satisfied with what she looks like now. Nope. Well, how would you do that? Well, that's why they only choose like supposedly like the maxim, you know, body beauty ladies. I mean, yeah. there would be a lot of like there would be a lot of dude Bullshit. vampires. Like a lot of dude vampires would look like Zach Galifianakis. Yeah. Uh, w- no, no, that's good. I would be into that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's the wrong term. I would say John Goodman. Not Galifianakis shaming here either. Okay, John Goodman. John Goodman. I like I like John Goodman. I don't I like know who to shame. I feel like this is nobody. Messy. No, no, we can't no shame Everyone's not shaming anyone's bodies. All right. Everyone's oh, wait, wait, wait. Trump. Trump. 
Oh, Trump. I'd get on board with that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because probably okay. lost five I don't want him to live five forever. He lost five viewers. Yeah, I don't want to live forever, but um, but, I, but I'd be excited if he was forced to look like that for the rest of his life. <laughs> and then be hunted by other vampires. Oh, my God. You just come up with like, the best TV show ever. <laughs> I mean, Vampire Diaries is ending, so maybe it could be Trump Diaries. Or Trump, Trump blood. Please don't. Please not, no more of them, him than I, we can... I know. It's, okay. it's, it's not I too much. We, we have some amazing comments from the forum. The forum generally was mixed. We had some people who loved this book who p posted, like, Lynn, hey, I read this um, read, read this 10 or 15 years ago. I love them. I read this when I was 14. It was one of my favorites. Um, we did have a lot of criticisms. And I hate using this phrase, you guy. Mary Sue is the most irritating phrase. That and White Knight. It's just like, Internet, go away. Because... <laughs> it's Mary Sue is by def I think a really chauvinist term because I uh, it's because of men not being able to write women well. To be honest with you, I think the before, origin of it. Before you continue, you should explain to our viewers what Mary Sue is, other than an awesome website, right? So explain what oh, Mary yeah. Sue is and explain what White Knight is, because not everyone knows that terminology. A Mary Sue is basically a perfect woman. Uh, she doesn't have any flaws. She has no character flaws. She never, and she's always great at everything. And everyone all loves her. So she's just a very one-dimensional, super-powered sort of character. Um, that is, it's a lot frequently given to um, char female characters who are in the leads. You know, like Ray in Star Wars. A lot of people are like, "Oh, she's a Mary Sue," and I'm like, "No, that's oh. you don't really know the definition of Mary Sue then." But I have to admit that Rhapsody, there are definitely shades of I understand the criticism of it because there's literally no downside to Rhapsody. She's perfect. She adopts orphans. She's always going to stand up for everybody. She's like gloriously beautiful and yet modest about it. I mean, toward the end of the book, I was like, okay, bitch, do you not ha at least have like poo problems or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> are you basically saying you wish she was constipated throughout most of the book? Or something, or like, yeah. she was a, well, she was a prostitute, and like, I get, I, there were a lot of, there are a couple of people in the forums who were like, I'm really glad that we depicted a prostitute He's who's not like ashamed and didn't have trauma that pushed her into it, we have a healthy sex worker, which is fine, but like, I didn't feel like that history actually was authentic to her, especially since we see these flashbacks about Michael, this creepo, that she, who is an abusive, yeah. um, abusive hiring person of her. Um, put her through horrible torture, and we really didn't feel the effects of that trauma in the per interpersonal relationships that you, she had with other people in a general way. I mean, what, there's this whole sequence where she meets this guy, Ash, and just cups his testicles just to dominate him. I don't know. I kind of liked it, but then I was like, well, that's pretty bold. Um, I don't know. What did you guys think about her I, character? I will say I did appreciate <laughs> how many times she hit some guy in the nuts throughout the book. There's a lot of nut hit hitting. There's a yeah. lot of, like, first of all, I want to apologize to our male viewers who probably were reading that and then, like, like, ugh, like flinched every time that happened, because I'm sure that's painful. I know if I, when I got punched in my lady bits when I was junior high and I get fights all the time, that hurts. Wait, but you got punched in your lady bits in junior high? What? Yeah. Really? We fought dirty. We fought dirty, but, like, well, I didn't fight dirty. I was the one who got bullied, but, like, guys, I think it hurts them a lot more because that's, like, Everything's out there, so I, I felt bad for dudes, but at the same time, I don't think we've ever read a book that had this much nut, nut punching. Nut punching. There's a lot of nut punching, yeah. But it was good. I mean, she she was she was a fighter, and mm -hmm. she knew like she had to take advantage of of whatever she could in a fight because she was smaller than most of her mm -hmm. opponents. Uh, so I don't I don't blame her. No, I actually um, it reminded me of you know because I just recently binge watched uh, all of Mad Men. Because I just felt like my baby should watch it, you know. I'm, you know, I'm that kind of mom, you know. Yeah. Like I just, I care. So, um, I, I watched all of it, and there's that scene where he's with the lady with the comedian, and he goes up to her, and he just, um, in order to dominate her because it's not working, the thing's not working out. He in in the restaurant, like on the side, like where like the phone is or something. He goes and he just puts his fingers up there. I mean, it's, just, it's a sexually violent act, and but she's kind of into it. With, but it's it's it's, it's a really fucked I up I don't even yeah. Know. <laughs> yeah, and it happens, and he just tells her, you know, like what's gonna happen, and this is how it's gonna be. And it reminded me exactly of that, only 
is gender swapped, which is hmm. you know, better. <laughs> because Adri Adrian H. in the chat says the term Mary Sue was started in fan fiction fandom, Star Trek, whose writers were mainly women. It's not sexist as those characters were considered self-insertion characters. Okay. Good note, but it definitely is used by men a lot to dismiss leading female characters. It's basically it's considered to be overpowered. It's a lazy. I feel. I feel like it's a lazy form of writing. I feel like instead of giving certain female characters more complexity, they just make them perfect. It's kind of like that. Women are whores or virgins, right? Yes. Or, or mom. Or moms are whores. Moms, yeah. Or moms, girlfriends. Or, uh, you know, they, they basically are there to support the male character instead of just being humans. Yes. So I think Mary Sue writing, but same thing with White Knight writing. If you make a, a character, especially a hero, perfect, then there's no reason to root for them. Like, yes. I actually find perfect people incredibly annoying, and then I start wanting them to die in the book. And then, then I start caring about the villains... Because the villains are always, and sometimes the villains are written too bad, like almost like Rhapsody to die. Were you like, oh my god, bitch, die? I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like if you make somebody too perfect, I'm gonna resent them as a reader, and I'm not gonna care about. There's no conflict. There's no growth. There's no hero's journey. If they're perfect, they don't have to go anywhere. Right. There's no character arc. That's yeah, and that's and the most important thing you can do in writing. Yeah, and the same thing with evil characters. You know, evil characters don't look in the mirror and say, I'm evil. Most really good evil characters think they're the heroes. Yeah. They're, they're the ones that are actually the ones you should be worshipping and, like, appreciating, but they're actually evil. They just don't realize it. I mean, I'm not saying that with everything. There's a lot of, like, characters that clearly know they're evil and revel in it. But for me, it's like this book, I was just like, I did not... I liked certain aspects, like the what, what Veronica brought up. Like, I really like world building, and I, I like books that are, are this heavy if they put the work into it, you know what I mean? If they really made me want to read it. I and thought she, she put all the work into it, but the characters didn't um, weren't in situations toward the end of the book to maybe learn more layers about them. They were just kind of, the plot got so unwieldy toward the, the, the second half of the book that there wasn't as much character growth as they could have done. That, I guess that would be my criticism. There's a lot of back and forth too, right? Like you yeah. didn't really know who was talking or what character you were in like, supposed to be I don't really feel that way. I, I more feel like there was just, like, a lot of the same, yeah, little things that Felicia just said where there were a lot of plot points and there wasn't a lot of connections being made. Like, I felt like there was a lot of things happening in parallel and oftentimes I was like, well, if, if someone just asked the right question right now, we would have a lot figured out, you know? If someone just <laughs> opened up a little bit and shared about your past or you know, chatted about some of your experiences instead of being so guarded. Um, well, it's probably Achmed's fault. I mean, he didn't want her to tell anyone anything about nothing. Yeah, and when Ash came in toward the very end of the book, I was like, oh, I'm really interested again. This guy, she grabbed yeah. his testicles. He's totally hot for her. And I guess they're the reincarnated people from the beginning. Is that right? We Luke? don't know for certain yet. No, but I feel that that is true. Yeah. Interesting. But I was really intrigued because then Achmed started getting jealous and then, you know, so then there was some interpersonal conflict. I mean, yeah, other I, than, I think it was Joe. When Joe entered the picture, I kind of lost interest and then when uh, when when, uh, the, when Ash came in, I was like, okay, I'm into it. So maybe it's just, I hate Joe. Like, why would she bring that kid along? So, basically... Obnoxious, pain in the ass Scooby Snack. <laughs> She, she, basically, guys, she basically adopts this orphan who is a thief, and she's like a, a sullen little brat. And for Ugh. some reason, you're my sister. We're going to bring you with us. And she's Why? still not nice to Rhapsody. She's still a total bitch to Rhapsody oh. all the time. Okay. It's like, oh, If you really want to put it in perspective, I, I know I shouldn't say this, and I like this actress in general, but I was getting such so, so much Dawn Buffy vibe off of <laughs> Where I'm like, shut up, Dawn. Like, I remember I was reading the book, and I kept thinking, ugh, Dawn. Because <laughs> what I felt about Dawn and Buffy the Vampire Slayer is that she was always, she was, for the for most part, she was really bitchy to Buffy, who sacrificed, even, even after Buffy sacrificed herself, sorry, spoiler alert. No, uh, I think after ten years, it's all right. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 like, gave something away about war games on Twitter the other day, and someone what? like, Spoilers! I'm like, War Games is like older than everybody. Like, what do you mean, spoiler? God. <laughs> That's ridiculous. 
Let's Wait, tell her I'm going to spoil it all right now. You know what? No, no. Sh- <laughs> I have more Jonathan was his... Okay. I did like that Ahmed and Rhapsody did not have a romantic relationship. Like, that yes. was easy, and instead it just was more like, you know, confrontational brother-sister kind of relationship, yeah. which I liked. I, I mean, it's not often. You always feel like, especially in these books, that there's going to be something there. And Ahmed just couldn't give a shit. Like, he basically (laughs) could not care less. And she wasn't attracted to him either. Mm -hmm. So, you know, although there was that one moment where she was like, oh, his face is actually kind of nice. Yeah, I was like, no! Yeah. But then it worked out okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, What did you guys, in general, okay, we talked a lot about Rhapsody. Um, Anything, could you follow the plot? Could anybody really follow the plot, or was it really just a question of, because for me, I felt like oh, we're setting up for a lot to happen, and then the book ended. And that was one of the reasons why I was like, well, I'm going to read the next book because I don't know what the hell's going on right now. Did anybody get the sense that, did you did you follow the plot and did you glean a lot of things in advance that I think she was laying in? Or was it just like a, a, a lot? Because a lot of people were like, there's a lot of info dump here. Yeah. Um, I, I felt like I followed the plot, but then at the same time, I read it before. So I can't remember if I felt that way the first time. So, um, I don't know. And, you know, to be honest, I don't know if I read the next book. I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did because I keep thinking I know things that are going to happen, and I don't want to say them because I don't want to yeah. ruin it. I right remember there. reading the second one and getting so mad at something that happened. But <laughs> don't, I don't tell me. I'm reading it. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell us. Don't say anything I don't about know. the second book. I'm reading it. All I know is I didn't read it on Goodreads, and I remember picking it up and being so excited, and then halfway through, I threw it against the wall. So I don't know. <laughs> Somebody Whoa. told me that. Happened. Oh, that's, a, that's okay. what I call Piers Anthony-ing. Uh, <laughs> Piers Anthony-ing? <laughs> oh, God. Talk about child porn. Yeah. Oh, God. I think that's what I called James, James Joycing. I did that. No, I love James yeah. Joyce. No, I was like that with Portrait of an Artist as a Young Man. No, it just another book. pissed me off to no end. I threw that book against the wall so many times in the dorm that my next door neighbor in the dorm thought I was having like really slow. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> good okay. Bad sex. Wait, I have to bring it back to the book again because Jessica yeah. just made a good point in the chat. Okay. Did this happen? Did Ahmed do the? The the cauldron stuff was in this book, right? Yes. Where they go to, um, you what's the what's the goddamn name of that place that they go to? Ah, Yulvert. Anyway. Okay, it's not Fedor. It's not. No. It's not. What is it? It's starting with a C. I thought it was starting with a C, or maybe. No. Begins with a Y. Um. Oh, oh, the cauldron with the red eye guy. Yeah, no, yeah. but the, the city, he, the place, not Caniff. Well, yes, Caniff also. Caniff, that's it. That's a city, but the area, like the. Oh, the answer the why, you guys. Cauldron. I'm looking it up. I'm doing, anyway, I'm doing so it did find it pretty surprising it. that he gets there and he's like, by Y-Lork, the way, y- Yelork. Oh, Lor- York. Yelork. Yelork. Yeah, it was York. York. Yeah. <laughs> um. So when he got there, he's like, by the way, I'm gonna be king of this place. Yeah, that was, like, a lot of people were like, rando. Well, yeah, what? like, where, where did you come from? Are you Daenerys? Where are your dragons? Like, what's going on? I don't yeah. understand. And I kind of liked how he did it. Yeah, l- yeah. lork. Lork. Y- um, Ilork? Y-L-O-R-C. Yeah, I always picture this, when they start with a Y as it being, like, like elven names. So, Ilork. 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 Like, it's a, um, not a hard that was sentence. Kind of, that was kind of like, what? Where is that coming from? Since when do you care about power like that? But I guess yeah, whatever. I was a little rando because I was so into his character because yeah. he was sort of outcast. He's a gritty yeah. assassin. He kills indiscriminately, and yet he's tormented because he's okay. to this super evil guy. And then she frees him. So it was weird that his agenda became the number one and not Rhapsody because he kind of owes her, right? Yeah, but then it was kind of cool how they kind of like wizard behind the curtain to the whole thing. Yeah. And like, kind of made made him look way more powerful than he actually was, even though he's still pretty freaking powerful. Um, yeah, so that was that was interesting. Um, yeah, a lot of people had that comment that it was just a random turn of events, and like, I liked where it was going, and I liked the the idea of it, and I really hated that guy Roland. And can we talk about Roland and like the sex scene where 
He's literally thinking about Rhapsody, having sex with his mistress, who's disgustingly old and has floppy boobies, and she's 40. She's not disgustingly old. He's I know. Not, he's, not, still, he's just not attracted 40. to her as much anymore. He well, was like, she's faded. It's yeah, like that was not, harsh. Well, she's not 13, you know? I mean, obviously, that's Yeah, big difference. <laughs> I have a question I, for you guys, and this is this came up in the forums as well, and I'm sorry I can't remember who who brought this up as well, but I had the same exact feeling when I was reading it. Did you feel like this book was written by a man? Yes. <laughs> yes. Because I yes. did. Yes. And there were I a lot did. of moments where I was like, yes. I'm surprised this was written by a woman, and I, I don't know what that means, and I'm sorry, but it was, I, I definitely got the sense that this was a man writing female characters or writing in that voice instead of a woman. It was like, anybody read, read The Wheel of Time, Nynaeve? Like, yeah. I loved her, and then Wait, there was... Wait, is it Nynaeve? I don't know. Anything, okay, yeah. The, the, many of, yes, okay. But she <laughs> was so infuri... And then um, sometimes there were so many infuriating things that the girls did in The Wheel of Time that were just so stupid. And I'm just like, nobody would act like that, but it's a guy writing them, so okay. I yes. had that sense sometimes with the women characters. You're right. And there's yeah. just a weird crudeness to some of the, 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 the... Her grabbing... Okay, somebody said she loves to say grab the testicles. It was such a random scene where she's just like, hey, baby, <laughs> You know, um, and then it, somebody at another point, Aquaman is like, "If you're finished having an orgasm, can you come with us?" I was like, "Whoa, that's really harsh." Wow. So there was a weird tone, at, tonality to the sexual stuff that was not very. Uh, I wouldn't have expected a woman to write it. Yeah, you're right. No, no. So okay, so I have something to say about that. Um, uh, so I felt that way later, as you know, the wheel of time's gone on. For ages, <laughs> obviously, the Wheel of Time yes, for circles ages for of time. ages of time. Um, but it uh, it turns and turns. But uh, I've so I've been reading it forever. And then um, and then uh, uh, w when I was younger, I was like, no, this is actually how girls are. You know, like that's in my experience, that's how girls had been. Um, you learned and how to be a woman through Wheel of Time? No, no, I, I, I didn't because I was like, this is. I didn't know. I had like, I always had like three or four good girlfriends, and I was shy, so I was like, well, no, but this is interesting and stuff. Um, but then, you know, when I finally learned that um, Robert Jordan was, you know, Mormon, as is Brandon Sanderson, um, then it, it all kind of made much more sense to me. So then I did get the exact same feeling rereading Rhapsody. Same thing. That, and, and, I, and I have heard on the internet, I read a few things, that people think that it is actually a man that wrote it. Really? Under, under a, a woman's name, yeah. That's so interesting. Is it only the trilogy that got written, or does she, has she written other things? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Right. It's, only, it's only a theory. Like, it's not, it's not out there like it is with, like, most other people's pen names for when they, you know, change genres hmm. or whatever. Yeah. That's very interesting to me because I I I would I would glean that as well. Mhm. Mm because she did all the stereotypical things a woman would do. Like she loves orphans. Like mm -hmm. I would be I would do a a, care, a sex worker woman who hates yeah, children. I mean, like that's, awesome. you know, but I don't know. If there was dolphins in this world, she'd have a like she'd like dolphins. It's like that whole you know, hooker with a heart of gold who has a dolphin tattoo and loves stray animals and babies and picks up litter when she's not, and you know, servicing somebody. And she's oh, and also she's um really into being a nun. Oh, and also <laughs> she, like helps people on the side of the road fix their cars. And she like makes orphans uh find like their true families and uh, heals people on the side. It's like shut up. Like I really wanted bad things to happen to her after a while because I'm like oh, God. A cliche, and I'm just so sick of perfect characters. And I I don't know. I feel evil yeah. even talking about this. I still feel evil be about being okay with teenagers having like young teenagers having sex. But I don't know. I still okay. I still don't feel weird about them having the sex. I guess it's because one Stephen King. Oh yeah. Growing up reading so much Stephen King. Yeah. That did not make me feel weird. Is that it a thing that happens a lot in Stephen King books? I don't remember. Yes. I mean, there's also a lot of the opposite, where it's non-consensual and yeah. it's child abuse. Um, but there's there's a lot of it being 
non-child abuse. Well, they're underage sex and... Oh, we lost Felicia. She'll be back. She's having internet troubles. She's well, on her way. Well, there right. underage sex and Judy Bloom books, too, or am I just, like, equating Judy Bloom with BCM? Yeah, they were, well, Forever was about that, but they were, like, 16 or 17. Yeah, and then B.C. Andrews, Flowers in the Attic, those... Yeah, not Flowers in the Attic, that's the first thing that came to my mind yeah, and when I we think, started talking I, about this. Yeah, show. and I think, like, everybody in our in our generation has read Flowers in the Attic, and so wow. we're all like, well, we're... In, we, you know what? <laughs> that really set the bar. Flower, flowers in the attic <laughs> is definitely not only is it like underage kids having sex, but it's brother and sister having sex, and they're also in an attic. Yeah, <laughs> a little different. Sorry, I yeah. missed it. I can't at least, at least they didn't throw one of their brothers out of the window. Spoilers. Just you did. Uh, yes, we did. Uh, we went into flowers and <laughs> flowers in the attic, Felicia. I, I, was I never read it. I never read it, guys, because <gasps> I thought it was skeevy. It, it, it was, and all of them were, and they were all amazing, and I loved reading all of them, everything. Yeah. I've been everything. I love them all. Yeah, you should read those books. I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> like, the more you read... You shouldn't read them like, <laughs> The more you read young adult, and the more you read, like, stuff that we read when we were in junior high, the less we care about underage... Uh, consensual underage... Consensual, <laughs> yes. Because underage sex scenes, that's, like, what we all... I mean, that's Sweet Belly High... R rated R, right? So it's right. like, that's what we all wanted to happen. Right. That's what we all, like, when it didn't happen in the book, we were all writing the fan fiction for it anyway. Well, and that's what so. Judy Bloom was for, was for us to read, like, what? how does it happen when it's when it's good and you have made finally made the right decision for yourself as a young woman. You know, like, that's, that's what I think she really contributed to that. Right, but <laughs> Romeo and Juliet did kind of set the scene of underage sex and drug use and bad male issues. Not male, like female male, like snail male. Like, if you're going to send a, a, a mail through the letter, or a letter through the mail saying, you're faking your own death, make sure that it actually gets there on time. Uh, spoiler alert. But also, it's like, you know, it's it was, they, they all died at the end, but at that time, honestly, didn't everyone die when they were 20? So I don't even know, perspective-wise. Yeah, I just read this great book called The Four Queens, and these these girls oh, were oh, written is it, off. Is it Philippa, Philippa Gregory? No, no, it's like a nonfiction book about four women who became queens across Europe in the 13th century, which is really awesome. They're four sisters who became the four queens that dominated Europe. Yes, and um, it just keeps being um, uh, recommended to me on Amazon, and I want. Yeah, it's really good. I read it. Really it. I was really okay. it. But but basically, these girls got married when they were twelve. Yeah, they had a kid when they were thirteen. So, um, I mean, it's not out of. Uh, it's just I don't know. It's it's weird to read that from a perspective of being so. Maybe maybe when I was eighteen, I would have been like, yeah. I mean, or <laughs> probably hopefully not. But um, <laughs> at least I wouldn't have been like ew as much because thirteen seems very very young. It it does it does and um it's just that I I think like I, again like I said I you know I grew up reading Stephen King it was consensual it it's a different time period which is not an excuse um but you know because it's fantasy so you can change that if you want to um but. But at that time, you know, if your the median death age is like 35, then I guess it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're but average I'm not, death age, that is kind of, it's really kind of creepy. I mean, if you're if your average death age is like 200, then yeah, you should not be having sex when you're 13. Like you got plenty of time to figure stuff out. Like that's just mm -hmm. I don't. Sorry, my dog is impatient, so I'm playing that's with my. That's what I, was I think about. it's it's all relative too, because if it's consensual, okay. I think it's okay to determine the age. I mean, I always had a problem with vampires that were like 400 that they were hitting on high school girls. Like yeah, that's, that's the that's the creepy the creepy factor from uh, from. Uh, Days and confused. <laughs> yes, days and confused. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Twilight. I keep getting older, and they keep, they keep getting. getting, 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 getting well, it's even worse. Like I love Regency. Like I want to pick a, a Regency historical next time. I think my my pick is next time, so I want to pick one because I love that era. But me too. Oh my God, she's nineteen. <laughs> Forget it. Just go to the farm. You know, and if you're not married at seventeen, you're just basically hang it up and become an aunt. You know, yeah. and it's. Uh, Pretty harsh. Yeah, and they talk yeah. about spinster age. I'm like, wow, I passed that a long time ago. <laughs> Great grandma age, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, like I shouldn't even be alive. I'm like a ghost age at this point in Regency. Like, there's no, I would have, but I think like Veronica and I would have died of consumption pretty early on. Yeah. Yeah, we already talked about this, and I would have died of a UTI. Yeah, Felicia immediately. Would be the only one still alive, and she would be like 
a widow at age like 18 because she married well. Really? Yeah. Like I always picture you as the one who married the right way, like in Regency time where you married like a like a lord or a duke. And yes. then he just gets <laughs> off and I'm like, I'm just an heiress. I can't yeah, help like, it. Like Pride and Prejudice or Sense and Sensibility, like the Alan Rickman character, you would have married him. And then he that. flies off, and then you're like super rich and bored and throw great parties. Like that's how. Yes, yeah, sign me up. That would be great. Could I come to your party if I have a UTI? Um, <laughs> as long as you don't die at the party because it would give the party a bad name. You're well, right. I, yeah. You're trying to bring the party down. I would already be dead, so I'm just going to haunt the party. Okay, good. Good, Perfect. good, good. Okay. Hello. Um, that let's see, out. you got, guys, for some reason this month no one started a casting thread, but does anybody yeah. have any casting yeah. suggestions? I had the hardest time, so this is weird. The entire book I pictured Rhapsody as having red hair. Well, that's what she looks like. Look, okay, so, yeah. She Maybe, looks awesome I guess. on that cover, by the way. But she was supposed to be blonde, and I just, yeah. like, every single time they said she was blonde, I'm like, no, she has red hair. Well, like, it's, it's like, like long, wavy it's like red hair. It's ash blonde. It's like an ash blonde, yeah? You mean, I like, strawberry blonde? Sans, yeah, no, it's strawberry, kind of strawberry blonde. blonde, yeah. yeah. I yeah, kind of pictured Sansa Stark in this character. Mm. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I Game of Thrones did. Mm. I, I don't know what it is about fantasy like this, but I always think of the same type of actors that are in Game of Thrones playing these parts. I, well, I I pictured the, the the girl from Outlander that the Scottish lady that's oh the um, witch. yeah I think I kind of pictured Bryce Howard oh Bryce Dallas Howard oh god yeah Bryce what about Dallas the Howard. girl from so, Shadowhunters you guys yeah Wait, I, don't I, don't that looks like. I don't know she's got know. really fake strawberry blonde hair that's like the worst I I, I hate I hate watch that show because I love it. <laughs> But her hair is like such not gr a great color. What about um that uh, model Kara? She's in the Taylor Swift camp. Kara Delevingne. Oh, Kara Delevingne with the eyebrows. Delevingne yeah. with yeah. the eyebrows. Right. The one with the eyebrows. I can see her playing that role. Like I don't I, know. no, I don't think. I don't she's think. not good enough. She's like a little bitchy. Like I mean, I don't yeah. know if she's in person, but she 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 feels edgy to me. And Rhapsody feels like yeah, come you're on, right. orphans, you're my sister, and I'm gonna bring you along, even though yeah. my friends hate you and you're useless. Yeah. So you mean this girl with the red hair in Shadowhunters? Yes. It's not that's redder than strawberry blonde. That's it's like a really up red. weird red. Yeah, it's a weird red hair. I don't know. Sometimes I love it, and then sometimes like ooh, clown. It's like a clown color. But yeah. What about like if we go way back? Um. Uh. Oh, you know what's her name from? Uh, I'm not redhead shaving. No, from Bye Bye Birdie. Like what's her name? Um. Guess not. Uh, uh, not um. Shirley MacLaine. Uh, no, no. And Margaret. I and Anne Margaret. Ah. But like not all like woo, you know, like I mean another the character thing. who's the actress that played Gidget in the movies, not Sally Field. Oh, the really skinny blonde one? Yeah, um, that's my picture. Oh yeah, I can't remember. I mean, I don't know. I just watched Valley of the Dolls. It's on Netflix, so if you haven't seen it, you guys should watch it because it's hilarious. Oh but, um Jane Fonda. No, well, Jane Fonda's not Nat. Jane Fonda's in Barbarella. Jane Fonda would be no. a good rhapsody. But I'm yeah. thinking Jane Fonda in, in um Barefoot in the Park. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Barefoot in the Park or Barbara. I mean, she had sandy blonde hair in Barbarella. It was like sandy orange hair. It's I like, kind of love that movie. I know it's terrible. I oh, love I love that movie. Barbarella, Barbarella is the most hilarious. That's that orgasmatron. Like, yeah. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah. But she's so cute and strawberry blonde in yeah. Barefoot in the Park. It's just when you read about the backstory of the movie, you get a little... Because the director was such a skeet. Yeah. Oh, I don't know that. Oh, yeah, I'm going to read about it now. He was married. What did he do? He was uh, Vin De was it Vendim? Uh, he was the guy who directed Barbarella, but he also he you know he had muses that he married. So like Bridget mm -hmm. Bardot, then Jane Fonda. Then oh. he he, he cashed in Bridget Bardot for Jane Fonda. What an ass! It was it's that way, or it was the other way around. It might have been the other way around. It's like how Noah Baumbach does that. You know, like how he like Jennifer uh, Jason yeah. Leigh and he switched her out for Greta Gerwig. You know, but they don't. They don't. But then they have. Is he romantically involved with Greta Gerwig? <laughs> oh, yeah. They're totally romantically oh, yeah. involved. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're not just writing all the stuff together. How they're... do you feel about Greta Gerwig movies, you guys? I love I them. Like, I like Who? Rita What are you even talking about? Greta Gerwig. I love her. Greta Gerwig is like an indie Gerwig. film star. And um, she's in a movie called Francis. I like Francis. Oh, Francis yeah. Hot is really good. And she, she was that weird. Was bad with Noah Baumbach. She, but she has changed his movies in a way that I'm not. 
like at first it's okay, it's you know, but then it's like, well, now I kind of miss like Margot at the wedding, which he wrote with Jason yeah. Lane. I, I, you know? I liked it, but I was like, now it's too much. Yeah, yeah. now it's Move too on. happy, you know. It's too much of her. We we yeah. got it. She's awesome, but like you guys need to split up and do other things. Like yeah. that's that's how I kind of felt about like Lena Dunham. I love Lena Dunham, but uh-huh. kind of like having it's like it's weird. It's like I have these like icons in pop culture that are really strong women writers and actresses and directors, but if there's too much of them in the media, I just get oversaturated and I just, I can't. And it's not their fault. It's no. like Amy Schumer did not want to be oversaturated, but no. that's what they do. No, and the same with um, uh, J-Law. Like, you know, like they didn't want, she didn't want all of that. Emma Stone, same thing happened to her, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. It was like people, and then they're like, oh, I'm so sick of her. But me, what doesn't really happen, I feel like it doesn't really happen to guys as much as it happens to women. No, it doesn't. It's no. only women. But, you know, if you look at, like, mm-hmm. what's interesting is that once a woman is powerful, mm-hmm. all pull, it's, 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 a whole, it's a whole Hillary effect. When really? she's running for something, people hate her. When she's in office, she gets huge approval ratings because there we we as a society don't like women to look power hungry or ambitious. Mm-hmm. It's, under, it's, it's, it's considered an unattractive trait in women. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's unfeminine. Yeah, yeah. Which it's like it really screws us in the in, the, in tr- to try to get into position of power because we know by definition trying to get into a position of power will make people not like us, which is basically what we're told from a young age is it's weird because yeah, you're, yeah. You're everybody like must that. like you I, I imagine Europe's not like that because they had royalty for so long and also they had Thatcher so it's like I feel like they're a little bit more progressive in that area than we are but at the same time it's you know it's, think, it's yeah that, like, they have a more liberal attitude toward women of all ages and yeah. just a yeah. different vibe I don't know and the funny thing is, all, almost all the books we read, they're women in power, and we're. I feel like fiction. I feel like the book audience is so much more accepting of that than the movie, TV audience. Maybe um, I don't know why that. Maybe because there's just more of books than there is movies and TV, like historically. So we have all this stuff to like consume, whereas movies and TV, maybe not necessarily they have strong female characters as elite as much as books do. So I don't know. Well, yeah. it's also like a big deal in like YA fiction um, in that f- female protagonists are, are you know, the constant. Why? Right? Did we, okay, I don't know. I look over. First of all, mods are working overtime tonight. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> You're not people. Also, I'm I look over too much. <laughs> so I look over and Toronto Gal 80, our awesome community leader. Oh, I love her. Her, her comment is troll sure like feet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're they're deleting and banning so quick. I don't even see the comments, which I guess is it about <laughs> Why are they talking about feet? Did we talk about feet? I don't know. Did no, we... trolls talked about feet. The something about paying about us to show us show their feet. Something. That's a I, whole other channel. That I, did, I do feet. need some money. I mean, I will show you my feet. Yeah, that's, just... that's totally <laughs> Don't encourage them. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. You have, like, have your own. You can't do it on Twitch. You cannot show your bare feet on Twitch for money, okay? I'm, I'm not going to. not going <laughs> to. I did just have a pedicure, though. I'm just oh, saying. Oh, that's different. I'm being a feet, Kyla. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll get my own Twitter, my own Twitch for my feet. Wrapping it up, guys. We had some <laughs> other books recommended in the genre, which I always forget to do. Um, Enchanter by Sarah Douglas, Medallion by Jennifer Fallon, The Forbidden Land by Kate Forsyth, and Song and Silence by Elizabeth Kerner. Now, I've read, I've, I've read Jennifer Fallon. I enjoyed her book. I had a real problem with Sarah Douglas. I could not, when I tried to read her book many, many years ago. I really did not like it, and I feel like I want to give it another shot because has anybody else read any Sarah Douglas? Well, what's like so. what's her most famous book? Like I don't know any. They're very books. big, like uh, they're very big, like uh, fantasy tomes, kind of like very much in the ilk of this this okay. one. I'm just wondering if maybe I need to go and revisit because my oh, initial well, impression was not do- yeah. worthy. Hmm. Anyway. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm so tired. Okay, we're wrapping it up. Okay, <laughs> this one's oh, community. <laughs> Sorry. This month's community pick was A Court of Thorn and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I bought it, but I did not read it, but I'm definitely going to read it. And there was a very uh, lively discussion on the forum about it. So if you guys want to pick it up or want to revisit that, um, join in. Our next month's poll, our alt is always, um, it's been really working really well, uh, being voted by the community itself. Thank you, Sean, Sandaluka Luka Luka for making all that poll happen every month. I appreciate it so much. Dark Witch by Nora Roberts won in a landslide, so that'll be our alt next month, and I love Nora Roberts. So. I do, too. I'm going to read that. I've been wanting to read yeah. that for a while. 
I've never and read any Nora Roberts, so that sounds great. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Yeah. Um, so and, our, good. and our next month's book is called uh, Veronica. Do you want to talk about it? Um, yeah, I don't know a terrible amount about it. It's called In the Black by Cheryl Nantes. And uh, I, I was reading, I was trying to find a good one for us. Uh, the, should I read the description? Yeah, do it. When Sam Keller left the military, military, when Sam <laughs> Keller left the military, she ran to the far end of the galaxy. Now she captains the Bunny Bell, a hey! hey! full of courtesans who bring a little pleasure to hard up men on mining colonies. When one of her girls turns up dead, oh great, it's Sam's job to find out who killed her fast. Marshal Daniel LeClaire is as tough as steel and quick on the draw, but when his vacation gets replaced by an assignment to help find the killer, he can't help angling for a little action with the saucy, hard-charging Sam. She's got brains, attitude, and a body he wouldn't mind investigating. Sam, <laughs> six months lonely, might just indulge him. But the guild that owns the bell wants the case closed yesterday. With pressure coming from all quadrants, Sam and her marshal clash over false leads and who's on top. But when the killer threatens the bell again, romance will have to wait. It's a captain's job to save her crew, no matter the cost. Wow. 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 I'm wow. Old, yeah. Sold. Sold. So, so lady, ca lady captain on top, brothel. Yeah. On top, brothel. Like Vacation. Like Vacation. Pressure, pressure from all quadrants sounds like the best euphemism. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, know. I don't know um, if you know this. Is it said. the gamma quadrant? <laughs> <laughs> and, they had, and they also said, they also said, Bonnie Bell, and then they also said the guild. So I'm just saying. It's that got everything. Some, it's some the best there, pick yeah. ever. Yeah, they're, at some point they're going to be like uh, Kylo with with the hair, and they're just going to be like Veronica with bangs. Like somewhere in there, that's just going to be the way. Yeah. It is. So I think that we could probably read this book because our next hangout is due to be on the 23rd of August, which is this month. But since it's probably a shorter, more romance oriented book, I think we can make that. So we'll keep yeah. the hangout on the 23rd, you guys. Okay. Um, Join us on goodreads.com slash vaginal fantasy if you aren't already. Join a local group. Uh, just join in the chat. And just FYI, you can create any kind of uh, forum uh, forum posts under the description of that month's book. So feel free to just start other discussions about things that are off topic even. And we'd love to have you on the forums. So thanks a bunch. And uh, Kyla. <laughs> <you're right. laughs> chug, 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 chug. Wow. chug. Okay, Hobo Kyla is setting standards I can't right. keep up. All right, we'll see you next month. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Mods. Bye. Put in bed. <laughs>